Now this report is about water quality in New Zealand, uh, specifically about the science of it, understanding the science. And it's about, it's not everything about water quality, but it's about the three main pollutants that are important on a national level. And those three are, I hope you can see this writing, are um, pathogens, sediment, and nutrients. So pathogens, things that make you sick, understand those to be uh, pollutants very easily. Sediment is actually mostly soil that's washed into water and it does all sorts of damage in there. And nutrients, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus. And those are the three things that are you know, across the country leading to quite a lot of concern about water quality at the moment. So this report isn't just about uh, a list of um, causes and effects, it's tr actually trying to um, explain the science and make it accessible so people can understand why this particular uh, cause has this particular effect. There's a lot of heat and not much light around on the subject a lot of the time and I thought that uh, we could have much more informed discussions, much more informed debate, perhaps less finger pointing, if there was a better understanding of the science across the board. And I mean, I'm in that category too. I've learned a lot by doing it, so my staff have really enjoyed learning about it. It's quite complicated, um, but we've done our utmost to, to boil it down and make it as simple as possible without losing uh, the accuracy. Well, what we've done at the end of it is to uh, Think so that you can actually think about a particular water quality problem in this way and I hope we've equipped people to do that in the report uh, and it's quite a simple kind of a model where we can start off with a question what we can follow that with a question how and we can follow that with a question where and the what question is what are the pollutants that we're talking about, pathogens, sediment, nutrients, or, or to identify those, how do they get into water, uh, not only where they come from, but what is the means by which they travel there, and where, uh, where they get in, because the kind of water they get into matters a lot. If you've got a fast flowing river, that will it'll be harder for weeds to take root and things like that. If you've got a stream that is shaded, it cuts down the light, so there's less photosynthesis for algae to grow, that kind of thing. Once you've done that, those understand those, then that really is giving you your water quality. And the relationships, of course, sit between them like this. But then, then of course, we go on to the next stage is what can you do about it? And you can actually intervene and improve the situation up here, in here, and in here. So it's a kind of a map that helps guide thinking about water quality problem and I hope there's enough information in the report so people can use that to think through. I guess my hope for it is that, that a lot, quite a lot of people read it, maybe it sits on their bookshelf, they'll use it as a resource, they'll take off and consult and that it will in fact lead to um, better discussions, better debate uh, so that we understand each other better.